Hi friends, happy Monday. We are going to be doing a new painting project today with a couple new materials that we've never used before with painting. <clears throat> we have some string that we are going to use to create some birch trees in the background. We are going to use a marker to make the lines of a birch tree on the side once we are all done painting. I have a simple little piece of um, I wouldn't call this cardstock. I wouldn't call it construction paper. It's kind of in between. It's thick, but it's not too thick. It should do the job just fine. I also have some different colors of paint here. I have white, green, and blue. I'm going to use all of these colors to kind of create an ombre, kind of like brushed together, faded together, blended together look throughout all of the trees. And I have don't know if we showed you these the cotton balls that we are going to use to whoop, to hold in one hand pinch it and we are going to dab it in the paint and this is how we will we will be painting today so go ahead and grab some cotton balls and all of your materials that you'll need bring them right back over here and we can get started together on this birch tree painting project so the first thing you're going to do when you are ready to start your art project is gather your string and cut two big pieces of tape long enough to fit over the top of your paper. This is where we're going to be taping our string so that it does not move when we are painting. So I am going to just use my big ball of string and kind of go up and down on my paper here. And these are best if they are crooked and not straight up and down perfectly. I want this to be as unreal or as real as possible and birch trees are never really that straight. So Okay, so now that I have the pattern that I want, I am going to tape the bottom. I'm gonna snip off the last <clears throat> string there. I'm gonna make sure that these are all straight, pull them against this tape down here, make sure they're all nice and tight. And then once again, stretching a little bit more. Once my string is pretty solidly on my tape at the top, I'm gonna pull just a little bit so it can have some tension there. We want our strings to be nice and tight on our paper. We don't want them to be loose because then when we are painting, it's going to get in the way. All right, let's see here. Alrighty, my painting surface is ready. Now I'm going to get my cotton balls here and I'm going to get my paint. Now with this painting project, I will be mixing as I go here. <clears throat> this painting project is as imperfect as you want it to be. We are going to work on blending the colors together. Um, not so much um, color slabbed onto the yarn here. We wanna make sure the yarn stays as clean as possible. We don't wanna cover it. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of grabbing my blue and dabbing it on my plate. I used a plate this time for a palette I don't want so much blue that it's going to cover my string and a bunch of paint. So I'm just going to, if you would like to hold your strings down as you go, that's okay, that's up to you. I'm going to 
gonna go back to my colors here and get a little bit of white mixed in with my blue. At any point in time when you feel like this is a little too soggy, you can switch it out for a new one. And as you're moving downward on the paper, I would suggest kind of fading it into um, a different color. I'm going to start fading mine into green, but I'm also going to dab it with some white before I do that so it can blend more into the <clears throat> blue instead of just going right to green. I would like it to be blended in there. So I have both kind of a little bit of blue and green, green and white mixed in there, kind of making a tealish color. I'm gonna see how that goes. to a more solid green here at the bottom. Now what I'm doing is taking just a little bit of white <clears throat> against this against this dark green down here. I put just kind of a layer of green at the very bottom because I want mine to look like there's sky at the top and kind of working its way up from green to blue. So I have some dark green here at the, or regular green here at the bottom, no faded involved, no fading involved. And I am going to start grabbing a little bit of white dab it on the plate and move upward from my green so that it's spreading into the teal color I had up here. So I don't know if you can see that very well. I'll bring you a little bit closer. It's kind of showing right here that it's dark green and I dabbed a little bit of white moving up into the teal and finally all the way up into the blue that we started with. So I'm gonna keep going and you can just <clears throat> watch as I'm blending these colors together. Make sure not to move your yarn as you go. I've been trying to just kind of hold on to mine as I'm dabbing so they don't move too much. Onto a new cotton ball.
So I am all done dabbing my paint onto my lines. You can see here that I've removed the paint from the top and the bottom, just kind of peeled it off and whoops, set it to the side. Now my one correction to the very beginning of my video is I would definitely say put a piece of newspaper down or a paper towel or another big piece of paper underneath. I definitely got paint on my tablecloth. It doesn't matter to me, but figured I would let you guys know that it will get messy. So I have the lines created from the yarn. I'm going to bring over my black marker. <clears throat> and now without touching this paint here, we are going to try to mimic some birch trees. So we are going to, I am using the very tip of my marker so gently just kind of does not have to be straight. Trying my hardest to not touch the paint. That will ruin my marker. It's okay if it looks a little shaky because we are making birch trees. Birch trees are pretty uneven on the sides. They are not perfect either. So Right, I have my first birch tree done. I'm going to show you <clears throat> the texture marks I'm going to make on this tree here. Do it from one side. Kind of just draw some lines on the side to imitate a tree. Now birch trees don't really have a thick bark like regular trees so they peel off really easily their bark just kind of flakes off so what this is is showing the color underneath all the bark of our birch trees okay so there's the first one and now i'm just going to keep going with the rest All right, friends, so I have finished the lines and the texture on my trees. We are all done with this one. I hope you had fun. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day, guys.